Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to When the Night Comes. In the last episode, Harry had been spotted. He is in the Enforcer HQ right this minute, and August... August is falling apart a little bit. I think... I think it is finally time for that final confrontation. Everything is about to come to light. Let's see how it goes. I steal my gaze, needing them to hear this for what it is. Evil may not be the right word to use just yet. We don't know why he did it. Maybe his reasons aren't as nefarious as we assume. Maybe. Maybe Harry had the right idea. Maybe we're too weak to ever beat them, so fighting fire was the thing we needed. To push aside our precious morals and actually fight with everything we have at our disposal. To survive by whatever means necessary. Become more than we are and show them just how this is getting very... I don't know. I, d I don't understand either, Rogues. I'm I might go back on that, I don't know. I don't... I don't understand. The way they look at me. Oh, God. Disappointment, maybe? Definitely confusion, though. But August is clearly fighting a war within themselves to try and rationalise this. Just as I am. What if there's more to all of this? It's easy to be hurt first before trying to understand the other person, and that might be unfair to Harry. You said it yourself, he's a good man. That's all I've ever really known of Harry. That he is kind, brave, and always does the right thing. That doesn't mean he's going to continue doing the right thing. As I said, I... I don't like disappointing August, but I do like... As I, as I said, like, she's been raised to always trust her enforcers, always do what she's told, and so I like this kind of position she's in where she doesn't really know if she should keep following this guy or if she should, like, just sack it in and say, like, no, this is bullshit, like... Oh, I don't know about this one. All the others I've been kind of okay with. This one I'm kind of like, hmm... So why should I disregard all of that now and paint him as the bad guy? When Harry could be the only- No, 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 no. That, no. No, um, th that, no, nah, no, that, that just sealed it for me. <laughs> We're going with this one. <laughs> I shake my head, knowing August is not a bad judge of character. Harry is just good. Good at manipulating, or spectacularly talented in disassociation. You weren't to know August. None of us knew, or could possibly dream it might be him. They scoff, rolling their eyes. I followed him about with doe eyes, lapping up any scraps of approval he dared to lavish me with. I've always been desperate to be acknowledged and told I'm doing a good job. He gave that to me, in abundance. Oh, sweetheart. I don't believe he realises that what he's doing is wrong, but that doesn't excuse it, and nor does it make you complicit. I prefer this. Yeah, this. This is more like it. <laughs> August laughs at that. A maniacal sound. No one evil ever sees themselves as so. I've encountered it enough to know that much. We stand in silence for what feels like forever. Both of us gathering our thoughts, our courage. This isn't going to be easy, or even marginally fun, but... Shall... Before I get the chance to finish my sentence, I hear the all-too-familiar heavy thud of boots in the corridor. Oh, shit! He's here! Hello! <laughs> You're right! <laughs> and then Lieutenant General Harold Addington appears in the doorway, 
a smile upon his face. Good evening, both. Oh, good evening indeed, dickhead. Unconsciously, I find myself tensing, bracing for what's about to come. If only this man was a hunter. Someone I could read past the look on his face and basic human cues. If Harry is an evil man, he's adept at hiding it. His smile is kind, even now, and I wonder if he has any idea what kind of situation he's walking himself into. Sir? Harry nods at me, his eyes flicking to August, who is quite visibly distressed and poorly attempting to hide it. I look at them, offering them a clipped smile, hoping it might help them keep it together. Lest we both fall apart. Harry, it's good to see you looking well. Their words are forced. Harry doesn't appear to be planning on staying long, his gauntlet, longsword and coat remaining in place. Instead, he eyes us both as he crosses the room, stopping in front of the fireplace that flickers invitingly. I have to apologise for my absence. As I'm sure you can imagine, I haven't exactly been in the right frame of mind to hold the whole country on my shoulders, let alone Lunaris. I'm sure it's been very difficult for you. They're struggling, and mostly failing to keep the exasperation out of their voice. At this point, I wonder if it's just easier to tear the bandage off the wound, expose the rotting flesh, lest August truly cast a storm upon this building. I step forward, and August stands quickly, their chair scraping along the marble floor. Is something wrong, Augustus? You don't look well. Yes, I want to say, they are falling apart, much like your town, your country. I quickly wade through the dark tangle of emotions that threatens to engulf me, and I clear my throat. We need to talk to you. Harry nods, still poised, still apparently completely clueless. I look to August, and they are in no state to initiate this conversation. Their hands are shaking, and I gather that we're just seconds away from a messy display of untamed magic. Camille? Harry quickly looks between us, finally focusing upon me when he sees that August is a lost cause. Speak. Now. You're beginning to alarm me. Oh, are we? We're aware of what you're doing. Of what you've done. The dead hunters. The missing hunters. He blanches, his skin going pale, but... He's no fool. And Harry shifts from someone who's just been caught with blood upon their hands to someone painfully in denial in a split second. I don't know what you're talking about. I ordered you to Lunaris to solve this mess, and you stand here and accuse me. Yep. August scoffs. Loudly, oh no, they're crying again. Oh dear. And you will stand here and lie to us so easily. What evidence do you have of the supposed indiscretion you accuse me of? The ghost of your dead husband? Does that count? He says it quickly, defensively, but the words are heavy upon his own tongue. Then I use the most powerful weapon I possess. I knew it. James. Harry freezes, truly turning pale now, all colour draining from his ruddy cheeks, his, wide, his eyes wide with shock and fear and pain at the utterance of his husband's name. I swear that if I listen closely enough, I can hear the furious pounding of his heartbeat as it tries to tear free from his chest. He swallows thickly, then <laughs> he laughs. Though it's a manic sound, the laugh of a desperate man. You spoke with him again? For the briefest moment, I feel sorry for him. 
the way he looks at me almost longingly, desperate for even a scrap of information on his dearly departed. It seems selfish that I would be the one James would choose to communicate with, but he was a good man through and through, and he could see Harry's madness, knew the right thing to do. He loves you still, he wants you to stop. I believe he asked us to tell him that he still loved him. He wanted me to tell you that he loves you. Even after everything you've done. I look at August and they're still seething. Their jaw tightly clenched, hands balled into fists at their side. They suck in a breath and drop their gaze from Harry as if they feel too much shame in looking at him. There's a flash of hope in Harry's eyes, almost as if he'd resigned himself to the fact that his beloved had disowned him in death. That James was too kind to forgive him for what he'd done. He stops himself, and there's a shift in the way he stands, the way he holds himself. It doesn't matter. I have to see this through. I'm so close. Uh, close to ruining us all? You disappoint me. August's words are venomous. Venomous. Biting. Okay, I'm sorry I'm taking so many of these, uh... Just so many good options for thumbnails. Tell us what it is. The blood? The elixir they gave to them when they're merely children. Harry drags trembling fingers over his face, and in that gesture, he could easily be that twenty-something enforcer that I saw in my dreams. He looks lost. He closes his eyes, and when he next speaks, I can hear a lifetime's worth of pain in his voice. Of course it was. Is. What else could it possibly be? It's always blood, isn't it? It is. Oh, God. I am sorry I've hurt you, Augustus. I thought... I thought you might understand. August bristles at that, and I sense a seismic shift in the way they hold themselves. They angrily swipe the silent tears that streak their cheeks, and magic swirls about their fingers in messy undulations. I thought you a friend. A father, even. You've killed people, our people. We swore to protect them as they swore to protect mankind. We're responsible for them. They put their lives in our hands and trust that we will not put them in danger. I take a step closer, placing myself in front of them, between them. We take them from their families when they're children and raise them to believe we're giving them the chance to save the world. When all we gave them was a curse. You took advantage of their trust in you. And you sentenced them to die the second you placed that vial in their hands and told them to drink. Harry watches them with an almost deluded level of disbelief as if he couldn't possibly imagine August defying him in such a way. And what of mankind? They'll overrun us one day, sooner than you think. I place my hand upon August's arm, tugging gently at them as they move to step forwards towards him. But August shakes me off. I'd rather mankind die an honest death, instead of turning into fucking monsters. Then they turn to face me, as fierce and as beautiful as I've ever seen them. I'll be damned if I lose the woman I love. Oh! Not after a lifetime of feeling so misunderstood and alone. Because I know I'm a good person now. Because of you. And I know that he is wrong. They shove a finger in Harry's direction. Their cheeks pink with anger. You are wrong. Their voice is a rasp of itself, a lost, almost childlike pain threading through their words, harsh enough that Harry flinches. Though his expression is still startlingly cold. August, do you not see? 
I wanted us to be on even footing. I came to realize how unfair it is that they hold such an advantage over us. They can do things we could never dream of, and we have these hunters just, just at our disposal. The untapped potential that lies within them is beyond anything that we can imagine. Then he turns his gaze to me, and he smiles. Do you realize what this could mean for you? How much more you could be? Then he makes an almost arrogant, greedy noise. In that moment, I see the Harry that I thought I knew, that August thought they knew, turn to ash. Replaced by a man driven mad by frustration, and now grief. Instead of asking, am I ready to take on our enemies, you would think, there is no stopping me. Deplorable. Unforgivable. Oh god, there's no, 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 no. We are. I'm. I'm going on the condemn train. I. I can't. I. Can't. This is crazy talk. When the initial rush of commingled horror and fury wanes, I clear my throat and address Harry with as much confidence as I can muster. Tell us what you did to them, how you did this, so we know how to undo you. Harry appraises me, clearly not impressed with the tone in which I give him, but he considers me regardless. You're curious to know how I made them better? How I can help to even the odds? I am. Tell me how you made me better. I try to feign interest, hoping to appeal to Harry's arrogance. He might have been driven to desperation, but I can see his tells. He's proud of his idea. He hums a sound of approval and begins. A hunter is just a vessel, well-trained and disciplined, not always worldly, but refined to kill. We have provided you with nothing but the best tools to take on your target. Even the most meager of whelps are turned into seasoned soldiers. Resilient individuals, remarkable results. However, he sighs, disappointed. Remarkably uninspiring. Disgust wells up in my throat at his callous comment. Remarkably uninspiring, you say? The anger I feel is matched in kind with August. Their aura is palpable, the air brimming with electricity. August is no hunter, but they were raised to be the best conditioned to be nothing but the best. It was practically written at their birth. Their eyes steal a look at mine and they are desperate. Their lip trembles, hands shaking, and I can see how frantically they are holding on. Harry's words, I'm sure, are not unlike those of their parents, and while they are not mine, I invited this dialogue. At this moment, I wish they could read my mind, to know how sorely sorry I am. All I can muster is a look that begs them to stay calm, that we need this conversation to happen, no matter how deplorable Harry's words are. There's a moment where it doesn't seem like they can will it back, but then it subsides. Harry waits, and when he's content that there will be no more distractions, he continues. I know it's upsetting, but please know I'm not disappointed. We merely mean to uplift you with the initiation. It was crafted to prepare you and protect you. We do not go into the field without knowing the danger, and we all experience loss in some form or another. His speech cracks for a mere second. I know. I know of the loss he talks about. I've seen it. But is that enough? As quickly as it goes, his posture uprights again. The elixir is a means to a promising end. It threads together the strengths of our foes without the consequences of their inherently evil nature. By imbibing this, it gives hunters the edge they need. Harry continues, and he's enchanted with his own words. 
To be better than them is what he considers a passable means to change us. I wouldn't be surprised if he told us he was disappointed in our human design. The drawbacks, or curse, as you would so inelegantly put it, is merely an unfortunate side effect of its blessing. Like all science, there is trial and error. I have seen the errors and made strides to correct them. Just like... The Chimera. I think Harry might be irritated with how plainly I lay out that I already know, but instead he nods. Something like respect crossing his features. As your speculations have led you to believe, yes, the Chimera is such a result. And then his face drops at the name. Clearly you are perceptive of how much is still a question, but bear in mind that this is a sacrifice for me, too. And why didn't you take it? August finally finds their voice again, but it's hoarse, venom spilling from every word. If the consequences were so great and you were so desperate, then why didn't you take it upon yourself? Speaking of sacrifices like you count them as your own, but you still used others for your own means. Playing with creation by his whims, and tossing aside the victims as unfortunate accidents. How are we expected to believe in your sacrifice when it barely comes across that you understand where we stand? You used us! Harry looks to the both of us this time, without remorse, and the scene playing out is unfamiliar. I don't remember Harry looking so... scornful. The sacrifices are my own. The blood is upon my hands, and it is a burden I am willing to carry if it means we can defeat them. I am expected to lead them, to guide them, make sure our path is set straight. You can reduce yourselves to mere tools if you wish, but what I do is for the greater good. I may not partake in all your battles, but that does not mean I don't lose myself in this war. Besides, I'm not worthy, am I? I'm no hunter, after all. Harry failed the initiation. If I remember correctly, that was that was the big thing, Harry. It's not that Harry is a witch. It's just that Harry failed the initiation for whatever reason. So Harry's ritual probably wouldn't work on him. He'd just be drinking blood for the lols, effectively. He turns back to me now and raises his chin staring past his nose at me. Tell me, Hunter, provided you had the choice to find a way to protect the things and people that you love as I have, would you do it? Would I? The question rattles around in my brain, as do all the other words I have stood witness to. But more quickly than I had thought, my gut responds. Again, I look to August, and the sight of them captures me every time. Their pale blue eyes, despairing as a cloudy day, but raging with an inner torrent at the farce Harry defends as righteous. What I wouldn't do to protect them. Camille, don't. But I am better than Harry. I would. I would protect them as I am and not as he would. Their breath hitches in their throat and August's eyes soften. I love them and I understand what Harry must have stood for before, but not now. There's a pause and Harry exhales. His eyes flutter shut and he smiles with some relief. When he opens them, they are less harsh, more inquisitive to us, as though the three of us had had a trivial spat. Then you understand why this must continue, and, most importantly, why I expect your full cooperation. Oh! Condemn him, condemn him, but lie. Oh, so we don't have the option to just go along with this. Okay. Um, I feel like maybe if we'd have sympathized more than we would... I guess in 
in total, because I went back, I had condemned him more than I had sympathized. I, th I feel like if it had been an even split, then I'd have an accept option, but I don't. Um, I said this before, I feel like Camille's a really bad actor. So I don't think she can lie very well, so we're just going to condemn him. The look August shoots me is sharp, incredulous. Their expression cracking open to reveal a vulnerability I've never seen before. It's beautiful, but frightening in its own way. As if I can hear them say, no, don't. I hold their gaze, hoping that they can see what I'm doing, that they trust me. Please. They exhale sharply, their eyes frantically flicking between Harry and I, and then they nod. It's quick enough for Harry to miss because his focus is upon me and me alone. I'm the one he needs. I nod, but I do not utter the words, because if I did, I'd be lying. Apparently it's enough to fool him because Harry smiles. And I do believe that is the end of chapter eight. Ooh, okay. There, there we go. Camille has condemned him. She is not going to take part in his experiments. Although Harry seems to believe she will. Oh, we, we're going to take him down. This is the chapter we are taking Harry down. We are going to stop the chimeric experiments. But... We shall have to wait and see how that goes until the next episode. So, until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.